Hey yeah, folks. So most videos I go into with a yeah, somewhat reasonable idea of, um, you know, my end goal, how I'm going to work to get there, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, stuff like that. But that's not at all the case tonight. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, I've been chatting with the uh, owner of a, a modding shop for Game Boys called Retro Game Repair Store. Uh, he's been helping me out with some information regarding the new Game Boy original, like this kind of Game Boy backlight kit, the IPS kit that's coming out pretty soon. Uh-oh. Game Boy's falling apart here. And um, I ended up actually picking up, purchasing with my money at full price, a, uh, a new Game Boy Pocket kit, even though I already have one. I did already get that in the mail, and I do have a video planned for that eventually. I'm still waiting on a few extra parts that I ordered from another shop, just so I can do all, everything all at once. But anyway, um, Jack mentioned, hey, I have this pile of broken mod kits. Do you want it? And uh, my response was more or less. I'm paraphrasing here. Hell yeah, I want it. And so I got this here. I have absolutely no idea what's in here, but based on what I can see, it looks like we've got some of those um, pirate all-in-one kits. I say pirate, but they're not... I don't know. I think that's kind of disingenuous. I just don't really have a better name for them right now, because that's what the uh, Cloud Game Store on AliExpress calls them. But anyway, what I've got here are some backlight kits. And the plan is to see if I can get any of these working. And if so, yeah, this is where I got them from. You know, I, I'm really happy with my order so far. Um, and full disclosure, I'm not being paid to say this. I'm not being paid for any of this. I just, I don't know, I'm happy with my, my order so far. And uh, if we get this going... Maybe we can do a giveaway of some, some sorts. So it looks like we have quite a few... In fact, it looks like that's what these all are. So we've got... Ooh. I bet I know the issue with this one right away. So I have no idea... Well, you know, let's, let's just do inventory first before I start speculating. Uh, okay. So one, two, three, four. We've got four of those transflective LCDs. Uh, don't see any immediate issues, but that doesn't mean they're not busted. We've got what appears to be an AGS-001 LCD, I think. Hang on, I gotta... I just gotta. No, that's a 101 LCD. What the hell it's doing here? I have no idea, but we'll uh, we'll test it out. We'll see what's going on. Okay, stick that upside down because it's sticky. We have. What appears to be two full kits. Um, one of them, both of them actually look like they're for Game Boy Pocket. We'll have to grab a uh, pocket to test those ones out. And then we have two, three, four of the original um, big FPGA kits without the uh, touch sensor. And then one of the big FPGA kits with the touch sensor. And last but not least, we have one of those... Uh... Ooh, this is actually interesting. I was just discussing with someone whether or not I was going to buy one of these. Hopefully this ribbon works. This is a uh, Game Boy Advance V3 funny playing kit. It's actually not a funny playing kit, it's just heavily inspired by it. It has a different 
big unmarked FPGA here. Uh, looks like we have the adhesive still intact and this screen, but I can already tell right off the bat that the screen's not going to work. So I will add that to the pile. I'm not even going to bother testing that. I have another screen that we can test out this ribbon with, but I'll have to go grab some more consoles for testing. So I will set this, no, we'll, we'll start with this LCD, but we'll set the pocket and the GBA kits aside for now. And uh, we'll try out these five Game Boy Color kits and four Game Boy Pocket screens. Actually, we'll start off with this just because I can do that. We'll be done with that, and then I can set the Game Boy Advance SP aside. I saw that kit from the uh, outside of the package there, so I grabbed a GBA ahead of time. And this is just a normal, perfectly working AGS-101, but you can see it's a 101 display. A 001 display It's going to look something like this. It's quite a bit lighter. So what this is doing here, I have absolutely no idea. And it looks... I don't know, it looks intact. I don't see... Maybe there's an issue... There's a pretty big dent in the ribbon right there where my fingernail is. But I don't see any rips or tears or anything else. And it doesn't look cracked. Okay. Oops. We need a tri wing. I'll leave that out. I'm sure I'll need it. Excuse me, try point screw driver. It's not the right one. Looks like we need a Y0. Yes. Bear with me while I take this apart. And this is an aftermarket screen. This isn't actually out of a console. If it were out of a console, there would be a uh, twist in the ribbon there. I figure if I do the GBA kit first, you know, I can just spread out all the parts, take all the space I need, and then when I'm done, I can put it back together and get it completely out of the way. Okay. So I'm not going to bother disassembling this any further because we don't really need any more to test it out. I do want to grab the bottom here and shoot, what did I do? in my macro. No, but that'll work. We'll use Easy Flash. Just so we have a cart in this thing. And let's see, I guess. Oh, dumbass. <laughs> uh, of course it doesn't work. You gotta put the battery in, huh? Okay. Man, I was starting to get real nervous. Well, there's that. So, oh, okay, there's a, uh, looks like there's a deadline going down it. Okay. That's not terrible, but it's obviously less than ideal. And that's not... I don't think that's damage from the ribbon cable. I think that's like if you pull this back cover off, 
on the screen itself, you can sort of kind of see it from here. There's this very thin ribbon that goes along the whole bottom here. Maybe, just maybe, if I put a little bit of pressure right here, I could get that line to go away, but probably not. This thing might actually be useful for a, um, I'm trying to, the, the El Clono, the uh, Game Boy Color backlight mod. You know what, let's actually, there's an easy way to test that without actually shoving it in the Game Boy Color. Ah, uh, dang. It is within the uh, viewing window there. Shame, but it is what it is. I don't really know what to do with the screen otherwise, but now we know. Okay. I am going to put this back inside of its baggie so I don't completely ruin it. And, uh, I don't know, project will come up for this, or maybe I could just use it for uh, test fitting that one AGS-101 mod I had planned and stopped working on like two years ago. Otherwise, let me get this, let me zap this thing back together real quick, and we'll continue with the testing. So I think, I think that was a good starting point, because that's going to set the tone, Jesus, the rest of this, because um, these are all, don't, don't look at this and go, wow, he just got all these kits for free. Yes, I did, but they're all defective in some way. So quite frankly, none of them might work or all of them might not work. I suppose it's more accurate to say. But regardless, I'm still going to have fun playing with it. I wonder from how long ago that AGS-101 screen is from, because I don't think... That store sells them anymore. Those screens. I think they've all. Oops, sorry. I think they've all largely been phased out for the new IPS mods, which I've got no problem with. The only problem. Well, okay. That's not. That's not a hundred percent true. I suppose if I had a uh, AGS one zero one like this console. With a damaged screen, I might uh, might want to be able to repair it with OEM parts, not necessarily just shove a backlight kit in it and call it a day. Right. All right, so there's that. Set that aside. We are done with that for now. Stick that back in my macro that I just have chilling here because cleaning up my desk is uh, apparently too difficult. Right, so let's move on to these next kits. These appear to be, yeah, like I said, these are the V1s. I'm going to save this one for later. So that one has the FFC touch sensor. So I already see what's wrong with this kit. We'll get into that in a second.
All right, so this first one here, the touch sensor is broken off, but I don't see any other physical damage to this. So maybe we just got to solder a new touch sensor on. The second one, same thing really. This cable isn't inserted all the way, I don't think. Or at least it's not inserted straight. There we go. This one, on the other hand, is a bit of a different story. The bail for the uh, LCD connector is broken. It might still work, but it's not very uh, happy. And of course the touch sensor is broken off on that one too. This last one is the Enigma though, because it actually has a touch sensor and there's no other physical damage. So this kit might have been paired with one of these LCDs and the LCD itself might have been bad. Get these LCDs out here. So this first one, I don't know if it still has this film applied or if someone just put it back on with all the bubbles. I'm thinking someone might have just put it back on. Don't see any immediate issues with it. There's no tears in the ribbon cable that I can find. No broken components. Everything looks intact. I don't see any cracks. Get to that in a sec. This one definitely someone peeled off and stuck back on, but that's really not an issue at all. This ribbon cable is pretty bent, but it doesn't look it doesn't look terrible. It's probably still fine. Uh, no tears that I can see. All the components look intact. And, uh, same story with this one, really, except the ribbon cable doesn't have any creases in it whatsoever. And there's no screen protector on it, but whatever. And last but not least, no screen protector, no tears, nothing. I don't know. I guess we'll find out on, uh, Jesus. There we go. On next week's episode of Dragon Ball... No. Uh, I am going to take a quick, quick break, though. Uh, give the camera a chance to cool down. And uh, I'll go ahead and get my Game Boy taken apart. I have no idea where I put it. Just kidding, I found it. We're going to use this one for a testing unit. This one already has one of these backlight kits in it, so it does already work, so... You know, I can at least use this screen. I know this screen works. I know that this ribbon cable works. And I know that that backlight board works. So I can use individually, you know, all of these parts to test all three of these. Because uh, I do need to test the uh, ribbon cables as well as the kits themselves. Because there might be an issue with the kit or there might be an issue with the ribbon cable. Find out on no, no, I'm kidding, I already did that. Alright, I'll be back in a sec. Right, so I've got the Game Boy Color taken to bits here. I do have, uh, well rather, this is the kit that is, or was, I guess still is in the Game Boy Color. You can see this is the AIL V01 version. So this is technically the legit version from Cloud Game Store. Though it is a little bit of an older variant. You can see it has that high vision uh, FPGA in there. Nonetheless, it should still work the same for testing out here. Uh, for power, I'm just going to use the same um, little battery power supply that I made a while back. Good lord. There we go. And uh, hopefully that'll be good enough for testing. 
probably gonna have to un yeah, I'll unclip that while I work. I should also turn it off while I work, but that's just entirely too much effort. All right, so we'll test out the third one because that's the first one I grabbed. And uh, hell, we'll even use one of these screens here. Trying to do this so everything's actually in frame. I was thinking about that uh, Game Boy Advance IPS kit. Realistically, I should have left that AGS-101 apart because I could have used that to test that other kit too. But, oh well, too late. Alright, and let's throw a game in there for shits and giggles. I have no idea what's on here. Seems to work fine though. I guess it's crystal clear. So from this, we know this kit, at least this LCD seems to, oh, okay, I see something. I wonder if that's the LCD or if that's this. So I can't really maneuver this. I'll have to, oh yeah, I can. You can see on the bottom here or not because there's some nice glare. Let's see if I can turn that off. Okay. Still can't see because of the glare. That's wonderful. I'll just turn off all the lights. You can see it's kind of flashing. I don't know if that's the kit or if that's the LCD. So I'm thinking it's probably the LCD, so we'll swap it out. And if this one does the same thing, then, well, it's probably the kit. Or, I keep saying kit, but really PCB, because this whole thing is, is a kit. And it looks like this one's doing the same thing. That doesn't mean that this LCD isn't also bad. I think that just means the kit itself is more likely to be the issue. Or PCB. Jeez. Is it flashing like that? Yeah. So I'll power that off. And uh, before I try another screen. I should try this kit on one of these screens here. I gotta unstick that touch sensor. We're even going to assume that the ribbon cable is good, which might be a dangerous assumption. We'll find out shortly. Oh. There we go. Okay. That's in there. And yeah, this LCD looks just fine through this PCB. Okay, so cool. We know two things. One, that ribbon cable is good. Two, this LCD is good. Okay. I'm happy with that. 
set that aside. Test that first one again, which is also probably good. Yeah, looks fine to me. Not flickering. Brightness cycles just fine. Works for me. Let's test the other two LCDs as well. Oh, that's probably not good. Let's make sure that was connected properly. Yeah, that's not good. So this LCD is bad. Test again with another kit just to verify. But the Game Boy Color doesn't boot with that plugged in. Okay, so this is interesting. The LCD itself looks to be fine, but there's no backlight. So I might be able to fix that. It's hard to determine if everything's all good with can't see it. There we go. So yeah, that looks good, but there's no backlight. So it could just be a solder joint issue with right here. Uh, it could be like a broken trace somewhere along the line here. I don't know. I'll have to... Uh... Oh, you know what? I have a multimeter, so that's pretty easy to figure out. Just flip that over. Got the multimeter set to voltage. And... If I'm not mistaken, that should be the backlight, so the fact that there's no voltage on these right here it means it's probably something along the lines here so I could probably test that uh, test that some other way or uh, fix it some other way I'd have to bypass this connector here but I think if we set this to diode test and uh, this isn't gonna work out too well because I gotta probe the back yeah I can't see squat might also have these backwards yeah. could also be multiple diodes in series I should test another, yeah, I should test another working screen before I uh, give up on this. Okay, so with this screen, looks like it works, but there's no backlight. I'll set that over there, and this one... No fucking good. And I don't mind writing on these because they have the screen protectors on them, but I'll have to come back to this one and figure out why it's no good, but I suspect it might have something to do with... Uh, how about some light here? might have something to do with this bent-up ribbon. Could also be torn in some way, but I'm thinking it's more likely that there's a short somewhere. So, yeah. Okay. We'll move on. Set that aside with the other one. And we'll get this LCD back out. So this is the known good working kit. 
unplug that. We'll test this one again now that I know all these LCDs are working. Though I don't think the results are going to be very much different. Still seems to flicker even when turning the brightness all the way to actually no yeah I see it flickering now okay so with this kit I don't know specifically what the issue is I don't know if it's something with the electronics or if it's a physical thing with a connector it could be on this end but more than likely it's an issue on this end the connector itself looks okay though so I'm gonna have to do more investigation I have no idea what it could be but let's go ahead and mark it off screen flicker and let's try out this kit so I'll have to test these ribbon cables too this one has the uh bad bail on the LCD end, but it might still be fine. Or it might be completely fucked. That's always an option. And seeing as how I can't even get the screen in, probably the most likely option at this point. Oh, I broke that off. Okay. I think that's in. Did not go in the way it should have, though. Ooh, that's a noise. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is also no good. Hopefully it didn't just kill my Game Boy. Let's test this kit again real quick, make sure I didn't kill anything. Oh shit. How did that get so high? Maybe that was the issue. Oh man, I wasn't even paying attention. You know, before I try that, let's try this again. Everything still works. Nice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And you guys watching the video, you probably already know the answer to this, but I don't because I wasn't paying attention to the voltage there. So we're going to try this one more time. If I can even get this kit plugged in. There it goes. I'm not even going to bother plugging an LCD in though. Oh, but it booted this time. So maybe the problem, probably the problem was just that high voltage. Oh, but the screen is just all white. Which could be a result of this broken connector. So 
in theory I should be able to get that to work. I'm thinking this one just has a broken connector, so... I judge too quickly. Still put it in the NFG pile though. Okay. This one actually has a touch sensor on it, which is unusual for these kits. Oh, but this LCD connector is also broken. But I actually might be able to fix it. It looks like it's just popped out of place. Yeah, that might have just been it, because that looks good to me. Oh, I get a little bit of screen flicker every time I touch it. Oh, not just when I'm touching it. Interesting. It's not nearly as bad a flicker as the other one, though. Like, the other one was, like, constantly changing brightness. This one looks like it just has a line. One flickering down at the bottom here. Let's see if we can focus on that better. So that's something I would put in uh, one of my own consoles, but it's understandably not something I would sell as a working kit, or even give away for that matter. Okay. Minor screen flicker bottom line. Good enough. We got the last Game Boy Color Kit. Oh, second to last. I was saving one of them. The last. Okay. So this one is all white as well. Oh, interesting. My Game Boy reset, and now it's not even white. My voltage is still good. I didn't touch that. I'm thinking this one might also have a broken LCD connector. Let's just double check, make sure everything's seated properly. It would be a shame to call this a bad kit when really the problem exists behind the keyboard. That is pulling way too much. What the hell was that about? Nothing's warm though. Yeah, I got nothing. Just double check it's not the LCD though. Yep. Same thing. I'm going to call this one NFG because I have no clue, excuse me, no clue what might be, oh, you know what, hang on, I think I dismissed this one too soon as well, uh, forgive me if the uh, video cuts out, 
If it does, I'll try and sum up what happened. But it looks like this bale here is not connected properly. It looks like the pins are actually sheared off. So I don't know that this is going to work. I think this one just needs a new ribbon cable connector. Let me try it one more time. Maybe I can just press down, apply a little bit of pressure. Probably not. Most likely it needs a new connector. Oh, what do you know? So I can't really angle it more without bending the ribbon cable, but you can see it's working now. So yeah, that's the issue. It has a broken LCD ribbon. Um, oh, let me test for flicker too, since the other kits seem to have that issue. So I suppose we could just put it together and apply pressure this way, but that's, that's not a really good fix. Um, really this thing needs a new FFC, but otherwise it looks good. Brightness control works as well. And I don't see any flicker. Cool. So this kit needs a new FFC connector. I have no idea where to get one, but uh, I don't know. I'll do that research and I'll let you guys know. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a quick break again because the camera is probably about to cut out. When I come back, we'll test the remainder of these ribbon cables, but they're probably all fine. Um, and we'll test this last kit here. I'll be back in just a sec. And we're back. Okay. So I had some thoughts regarding the uh, flat flex cable connector on this unit here. Now, I didn't realize this when I was first looking at it, and I have managed to completely lose my tweezers, so that's cool. Um, never mind, I found them. But it looks like these pins might not necessarily be sheared off. I didn't realize that this connector itself was just kind of, I don't know, flapping in the breeze here. So I'm thinking maybe we can just take this off. And I don't think I broke anything. We can get another one of these, like this one that has some screen flicker. Take this off, put it on here, and we might be good to go. Except I have no idea how to remove these things. I just know that they can be removed. So uh, here goes nothing, I guess. What I'm doing right now goes against everything, every instinct. It says, do not pull as hard as you are pulling. But I'm doing that anyway. Might have to, might have to come back to this. Oh, there it goes. I think the trick is not using tweezers that are just really bent, apparently. Let me grab some new tweezers. Or not, because I put them somewhere. I don't know where that somewhere is. I did order new tweezers. But... Unfortunately, that doesn't help me now. Okay. So, I'm just going to try my best to manage with these bent tweezers. You know, you watch all these YouTubers, uh, and they're doing shit like this. They make it look so easy. Those sons of bitches. Cool. I'm 
Tronics fix especially, I'm looking at you. But in his defense, he does this a lot more than I do. I might have just ruined two kits. Or not. Maybe not. Maybe maybe we're going to be okay. I think we're okay. 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 Let's try it out. Good lord. Okay. It was this one, right? Yeah. And let's get good LCD up in here. So this is why I labeled all the kits, because I just mixed them all up. Uh, okay. So that still inserts just fine. And there we go. All is well. So I have a perfectly working kit now. Let's, uh, actually, let's boot up this game here. Let's just double check there's no flicker again. I think it's good. Even brightness control's working. Perfect, no flicker. Works for me. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So... I'm going to pull that off. We're going to pull this ribbon cable out. Now let's test these ribbon cables. So I know that ribbon cable is good. Um, I should probably be marking these off once I know they're good. Oops. But I'll just stick to marking them when they're bad. I think I'm testing these way more than I need to. That works. I'm happy. That's good. Yeah, that's also good. I don't suspect anything will be wrong with these. They all look like they're in pretty solid shape. And they're not generally uh, the weak spot with these kits. Boom. Yep, they're all good. Figured as much. Oh, I should have left that plugged in. Oh well. Alright, last kit. The reason I was saving this one for last is because this is the one uh, adapter board I don't actually have. I have pretty much every other version of this kit except for this one. This one being the one that has the uh, unmarked FPGA here and the uh, touch sensor flat flex cable. So this one, it looks like... Oh no. Looks fine to me. Just kidding. The board's a little tweaked, but hmm. based on the number of screens I received and uh, the number of uh, PCBs I received, I'm thinking the issue might be or might have been with one of the screens for this kit. Let's see. Of course it's not booting the game. The game's not plugged in. Kill that light so y'all can see a little bit better. But everything looks good.
Touch sensor works. Yeah. I call that working. Of course, I have to put it together to know for sure. Well, that was um, anticlimactic, I think. So, I think we've got two perfectly working kits. More or less. I'm just going to throw those all in a pile. This is good to go. Shoot, it went to sleep. Come on, wake up. I gotta wave it around like a moron for it to wake up. Apparently. Or we just turn it off and turn it back on again. There we go. Right, so this one is missing its touch sensor. But that is a super easy fix. These touch sensors are literally just copper tape soldered to a wire, soldered to the PCB. Turn that off now that I'm done with it. Okay. So we've got two PCBs working. Two screens working, and I'll set it aside with two adapters working. All right, now let's move on. Keep hitting that damn camera mount. I'm sorry, guys. Let's do the pocket kits. First, I'm going to test these in a Game Boy Color. Because they should work in a Game Boy Color. I think they'll work in a Game Boy Color. But we'll test them in a uh, pocket as well. If nothing else, I can still test the screens. So the pocket kit looks like it comes with this big piece of foam, a wire. touch sensor that's probably supposed to be soldered to the board. The uh, inf infamous transflective LCD. Looks like there actually might be some corrosion or something on this one. How interesting. There's a crease in the cable, but I doubt that's actually causing an issue. I don't know. We'll find out in just a moment. We have the, feels like glass uh, lens here. That is probably fine. Looks fine to me. And last but not least, the adapter PCB itself. Now this actually, let me turn around and keep talking to the camera. This actually looks, oh no, it does look the same. I thought I saw a few differences. I guess I was looking at uh, these T test pads being soldered on to, whereas on this board they're not. But otherwise, these look like the same board with the same things populated. So yeah, let's uh, let's test it out. I want to test this one on a pocket too. This is the Game Boy Color kit. This is the Game Boy Pocket kit. They should both be interchangeable. I think that's how the uh, other kit works. And before I do that, actually, we're going to test with a known good LCD. Okay, that was anticlimactic. All seems well. Wait till we get. I don't see any flicker either. Do 
touch sensor seems to be working fine. Yeah, I got nothing. Perhaps the issue with this kit is the LCD. No good. Unknown. Or maybe not. Yeah, everything looks good with this kit. I suppose I can only offer speculation. It looks like they started installing it. But didn't get too far. The problem actually might be this ribbon cable adapter. Because there are electronics on here. There's the... But I don't see any major issues with this. That doesn't mean it's not broken. So if nothing else, this kit works in a Game Boy Color. Still got to test it in a uh, Game Boy Pocket though. I should have left that on the Game Boy Color side. Oops. Alright, so that is good. I will set all of this aside. We'll test that momentarily. And let's try out the other pocket kit. I suspect it's going to be the same story, but... If I can even get it out of the bag. There we go. So, another glass lens. Looks intact. Unused. Set that aside. We've got this here ribbon, also looks like they started installing it. Uh, everything looks intact, but it is a little uh, bent. So that's probably the problem. We've got the touch sensor, it is actually soldered on here. Both the FFCs look good. What's interesting is this board is missing that component down there. I don't know specifically what that component does, but it was on the other pocket kit. So it might be interesting to find out. For those playing along at home with Google in front of them, this chip is a 92N4 new line 93C461. And it looks like it's an 8 pin. I don't know what package that is offhand, but, hmm, interesting. Okay. Be very interested to find out what that IC actually does and why it's missing. Before we test the LCD that came with that, we will test a known good LCD. If I can get it in there, there we go. And let's throw the game in here. Oop. Looks like it's working. I see no flicker. And the touch sensor works. Good enough for now. Oops. swap out to the LCD that came with the kit and this one is again creased but it doesn't look fatally so there's a big dent in the middle here though hopefully that's not a big deal oh yeah this thing's fucked but not for the reasons I thought it would be. Looks like it's just got some pressure damage or something. It does work, but I mean, clearly that's less than ideal. Bummer, okay. 
I'm just going to write cracked on it because... It is. But it still works. Good for testing, I suppose. Right. So now we're done with this Game Boy Color. I am going to take a break again. I'm going to go ahead and put this together, and I'm going to take apart the Game Boy Pocket that I've been stacking all these bad parts on. This Game Boy Pocket here... Don't fall over. There we go. This has the um, all-in-one kit that I installed pretty recently, and I even just rewired it so it actually shuts off when you shut the darn thing off. Uh, but we're going to test with this pocket in particular because I can test uh, with a known good ribbon. Or actually, no, maybe we should test with a different pocket. Because I don't really want to desolder that. But I still have to test these. So, yeah, actually I'll go grab another pocket. I'll be back regardless and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Alright, so we're in the final stretch here. I went ahead and put that Game Boy Color back together. I put it back together with the original kit. I didn't use any of these new kits yet. Uh, I did do one final closer look at um, these three PCBs. I had these marked off. Pretty much all of them had some screen flickering issues. And I looked at it and it looks like all of these flat flex cables are actually broken. Uh, the connectors, rather. So you see how if it's in focus, there we go. On this side, we have that little brown tab in here that's missing from this side that's broken off, so it's not applying the right pressure. On this next one, obviously this whole side is broken off. And then on this last one, it's the same thing where it's missing in that little corner there. So I'm gonna see if I can't order some new connectors for these three PCBs and just, well, swap some new connectors onto them. Um, these two, or these three LCDs actually, I'm not gonna be able to do a whole lot with. So I'll have to see about replacing them as well. Uh, this one, I don't, I already completely forgot what was wrong with it, but I wrote NFG, so I'm gonna have to take my word for it and assume it's no fucking good. Uh, this one is got cracked LCD, so I'm going to keep using it for testing, but it's not good enough to actually put in a kit and ship. Uh, this one seems to work, but doesn't have a backlight. I'm going to have to play a little bit more with it and see what's going on. I did wire up these uh, two wires here, and um, I was going to play with that, see if I can't get it working, but that's not something I really want to play with right now, because I have no idea how this is supposed to be wired, so... I have no idea how it's supposed to work. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to set those aside. What we have left are these three PCBs to test. Now I know these three work on Game Boy Color kits, but that's not what I want to test. I want to see if they work on a uh, Game Boy Pocket. So what I have here is that silver one that I rebuilt just pretty recently actually. Um, it's actually perfect for this test because it has no screen and it has no backlight kit. So, we're all good to go. I want to go ahead and test all three of these boards, but before I get to that, I want to quickly talk about this lack of a component here. So I looked it up, and it's actually... So I read off the part number. I don't remember which one of these. The top number is irrelevant. It's the bottom number that we care about, 93C461, uh, which it looks like it's a serial EEPROM. Now, an EEPROM... In this particular case, I can't imagine what it might be used for except to perhaps store brightness settings. So I'm thinking maybe these two kits will reboot, or when you turn the Game Boy on, they'll turn they'll set the brightness to the previous level, whereas this one will always reset to default. I don't know. We'll have to test it and find out. So We've got here this Game Boy Color, or excuse me, Game Boy Pocket. I know this pocket works, uh, or at least it did last time I was messing with it. Uh, I did already go ahead and solder up that power wire there, so we should be good to go on that note. Let me connect up that, turn on the power supply, and we should hear it boot. I got a power light. 
volume's all the way up, and it boots fine. Yep. So I think we're good to go there. I'm going to pop that out of there. And uh, I guess let's try it out. So this, like I said, these have some electronics on there. So the ribbon cable might look good, but there might still be something bad on there. So we have to test each of these. And we also have to wire up this power, but luckily it's easy enough. Especially since I've already got that wire attached. And we will go ahead and test out the no EEPROM one first. I don't remember which is which, but there is a good there is a decent possibility that um, one of these kits does not work with this console. Of course I mixed them all up. I don't know which is which anymore. But uh, here goes nothing. That looks like it boots. So out of curiosity, I just set the brightness to off. I'm going to reboot it. And it boots back with the brightness on. Let's plug a game in. Oh. That's why I didn't have a game plugged in in the first place. Seems to boot fine. Let's kill these lights. Of course, this is that cracked LCD. Brightness seems to work. I don't know. Everything looks good. I don't see any flickering either. Cool, so we got a, by the way, the contrast wheel does nothing. Adjusting it all the way up seems to jump the power usage up two milliamps. So, that's what it is. All right, switch that off. We're gonna test all three of these boards on this ribbon cable. And then I'm going to swap the ribbon cable and just test one of the boards. All right, I think that's in there. I think it's in. All right. Same deal. Seems to boot up just fine. Brightness control works. I'm gonna leave that to off. And power. Oh shoot! I just. Let's try and power cycle it without hitting that. Boot it back on, and it boots back on to default. I don't know. We're gonna leave it on second lowest or lowest. I can't remember which. Reboot it one more time. And it still resets again. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what that is used for. I'd love to do more tests, but I don't even know what to test for. Otherwise, this kit seems to work too. Which was kind of to be expected because that ribbon does work. <clears throat> Set that aside. Last kit. And then once this kit is cleared, we have one more ribbon and then one more console to test. And that looks like it works too. Brightness control. Seems to be fine. Let's just try a quick reboot.
Oh, see, did that do what I just think it did? It did. See, this one is remembering brightness. Interesting. Yep. How bizarre. So really, I wonder why it's just not working on that other kit then. Interesting. Okay. Whoopsie doodle. I just broke that. Not the kit. My Game Boy. The, uh, the thingy came out of the hole. It's not supposed to come out of the hole. The bale. Okay, so that one is good. Let's put that back in the hole. There we go. We're good. I didn't break it. Much. And let's test out this ribbon here. And that also seems to work. Let's try it with a game just to be sure. well to me. So cool, we have two MGB kits. Oh geez, I just found something interesting. So this was on my desk. Let's see if we can't, oh never mind, that's not at all what I thought it was. That is literally just solder. Just kidding. Okay. Okay. Let's get this out of here. I'm going to switch that off for the time being. So we are done with the MGB. Eventually, I want to test. Oh, shh. My soldering iron just went to sleep. Oh, good. It was still hot enough. All right. But we're done with it, so it's okay. All right. Eventually, I want to test this kit in a uh, DMG, one of these bad boys. But that is an experiment for another time, I think. Right. So all three of these work. They are either DMG or MGB kits. But since I have two MGB ribbons, they will be MGB kits. And by DMG, I totally meant CGB, Color Game Boy. All right, set those aside. And set that aside and set this aside. I should have desoldered that. Oh well, I'll get to it. Last, but certainly not least, I have misplaced, just kidding, here they are, two Game Boy Advances. These are perfectly painfully stock Game Boy Advance consoles. This one had some corrosion damage, this one has uh, some LCD polarizer damage, but they do otherwise work perfectly fine. I did already start taking them apart. Uh, we're going to start with this one. This is a 40 pin model. For those that don't know, Game Boy Advance consoles come in two different flavors. You can see the difference in size of LCD ribbon. Basically just 40 pin or 32 pin. And for the most part, there really isn't a difference between the two models. Uh, aside from the fact that the 40 pin models have 40 pin LCDs. Just flip that out of there. I'm going to do this one too while I have the tool in my hand. All right, and here is what we're testing. We want to see 
if this kit works. Now the LCD that came with this kit is uh, it's right here. It's this one. Now I already know that this LCD isn't going to work because I can see that the ribbon cable is ripped. Um, sad, but it is what it is. I mean, I'm not immune. This is a ribbon cable from another of my mods, and you can see that one's pretty well fucked up too. So I will add these both to the pile of shame and uh, mourn them daily. But that's okay, because we got... See, I could have tested it with the SP. A brand new LCD already handy. I bought this. So, well, actually, I bought two of these because I figured I am a complete moron. Let's make sure I don't break this. Okay, so that would end up folding forward. And that should go like that, I believe. And uh, let's try it out, I guess. Let's set that down like that and flip it up this way. And uh, I can't actually tell if the Game Boy's on. I don't think it is. There it goes. So, yeah. This ribbon appears to work. Let's try a game. I have... Oopsie doodle. My Easy Flash still in that macro. If I can manage this without destroying everything. Boots at the very least. So yeah, I'm happy with that. But just to make sure, I'm going to unhook this LCD before I do anything else, because that is the delicate part. I mean, not that this isn't delicate, it's just that's more delicate. I wanted to test both 40 pin and 32 pin because this cable has a pretty nasty crease in it. I'm assuming it was installed in a 32 pin Game Boy Advance. And then the uh, person who installed it ended up ripping the LCD cable. And uh, we'll refrain from further speculation, but at that point, the kit was returned to the vendor. So that goes there. I can flip that up that way. Don't destroy anything. Hook up these connectors. There we go. Oh, this is awful. But I'm doing it anyway. And it works on there too. So, yeah. Now I have another one of these kits. Um, I did mention the other day, someone had asked me in a comment, you know, am I planning on buying one of these V3 kits? Uh, which is one of these right here. And I said, no, not really. But uh, here we are. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and plan out an install for this one. I think I might actually order a uh, pre-trimmed shell from Funny Playing. Try that out. And yes, I do recognize the irony, but I don't care. They'll sell me a shell. Regardless, they don't care what kit I'm actually putting in it. Especially since I've already bought so many freaking kits from them. But uh, yeah, there we go. So I think... That ribbon works. Obviously, the LCD is busted. Um, but I did end up with a working Game Boy Advance kit. Set that battery aside. I've got a complete Game Boy Color kit. 
I actually had to put no parts into this. I was able to combine enough parts to get that working. And then this pile of parts off in the periphery, I have two working LCDs, two adapters, and three PCBs. So this is either two full Game Boy Pocket kits, which I have the lenses already, might as well be. Uh, oh, forgot about that. Or Game Boy Color kits? I don't know. These work for both, so. I'm gonna see about ordering some extra LCDs. I think they're relatively cheap, like eight bucks or so. Uh, wait, no, I'm thinking of these. These are eight bucks. I have no idea how much these are. I'll see if I can order some. Uh, and then I'll order the parts for these ones, and if I can get these working, I'll order LCDs for these as well. But, I mean, so far, I got one, two, three, four kits. I think that worked out pretty nicely. Um, I think I'm done for the evening. I just got to go ahead and put these three Game Boys back together and clean up my messes here. But otherwise, I got to shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop again for sending me these kits here. This is super cool of them. Um, and I know some of y'all are probably thinking, oh, that was such an easy fix. Mako could do it. Sure, but look at how long this video is. All right, was it worth it for someone who sells these things? Probably not. Is it worth it for someone who has nothing better to do? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I had fun at least. Um, and hell, some of you guys even sat through this whole video, so I think it was worth it. Anyway, uh, I'm probably going to give a few of these away. Uh, i got to actually get the rest of them assembled, though. That first Game Boy Color kit I already kind of committed to someone. So, um, the other Game Boy Color or Game Boy Pocket kits, I guess we'll do a giveaway some at some point. This one I'll do a video on, and uh, we'll compare it to the actual legitimate kit, and I don't know. Until next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Didn't hit the stop.